Hey listeners, and welcome back to the Property Mastermind Podcast. If you're loving the show, we'd be grateful if you would leave us a five-star review on your favorite listening platform. Your support helps us reach more people to share our valuable knowledge with. Before we dive into today's episode, Bob, I wanted to let everyone know about our online course. So as many of you know, Bob's been developing for over 40 years and has condensed all of his secrets and strategies into an online course that covers the A to Z of property developing. So this video-based course will teach you everything you need to know about finding sites, conducting due diligence, confidently crunching numbers, assessing the right builder, case studies, plus gain access to a list of contacts, including best lawyers and accountants that we regularly work with. So if you're interested in learning more, book a discovery call with us today by heading to our website at www.propertymastermind.com.au. I've had thousands of students tell me how this course has propelled them into property development. So don't just take our word for it. We'll also include a link in the show notes below. Let's dive into the episode. Hello and welcome back to episode 164, part two of how to pick the right builder. Last week we we got a little bit carried away and the podcast dying, started going on a little bit long, so we thought we'd hit pause and go again. So we didn't sort of um, people didn't run out of time to listen. So Bob, today's tip. Oh well, yeah, it's a boating or a fishing tip today. What is it going to be? So as you know, we hit we, we hit a bit of rough weather a little while ago when the you know the battery tore out the wires were broken and all sorts of things this isn't when we almost drowned the story well that's i don't know if we've thing. actually yeah. told everyone the real so, story so, <laughs> so a number of the electrics wires are all snapped and broken so i've gone back and i've sort of sorted it out and connected them all mm -hmm. and nothing works oh really you didn't <laughs> tell me that what happened well i think the tip is better to get a marine electrician in at the beginning Mm. Than try and do it all yourself. Okay, gotcha. Mm. A okay. couple of things work, but a lot of things don't work. Okay. I know I'd rather find out before <laughs> we're in the ocean rather than when we're in the ocean. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, there's, there's my tip for today. Great tip. Bob. Go straight to the experts first. Yes. Don't do too much yourself because if you're not an expert. Last time we went out, it was a couple of weeks ago, and Bob wanted to just test that the anchor was working, that the electrics for the anchor <laughs> was okay. And so, what we Put the I've got an electric anchor, dropped it over, and it just cut the motor out. Next thing we're <laughs> like out of control, floating somewhere. I'm like, I'm no, you get it sorted. Okay, so yeah. So, so I've been out once since then, and, and by himself, I didn't go. Yeah, so I wanted to anchor up and do a bit of fishing, and the anchor wouldn't work at all. Oh my goodness! <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. hear that yeah. laugh. <laughs> there's, more, there's more to it than just the anchor. Yeah, there's stuff I don't know here, I can tell. Yeah. Anyway, let's move back in. Before we kick in, uh, this week the book goes to Barry Mabel. Barry Mabel recently joined our uh, just our community Facebook group, which is Property Developer Secrets and Hacks. So Barry, thanks for joining that community, and we will soon get a book to you. Okay, so this is part two of how to pick the right builder. We were on this last week and ran out of time because I was asking so many questions, but I know <laughs> it was a really useful yeah. Uh, podcast Bob so let's carry on and thank you to the people who have been sharing our podcast and telling people about it we really appreciate it okay so we were up to last week we, we finished off with architect uh, not with architects with uh, interior designers uh, and you know how you pick your specs and whether you rely on them to pick them this week Bob I want to start off with so you probably if you haven't listened to episode 163 you might want to start there otherwise this one's going to feel like it's in <laughs> mid-ear uh, but let's talk about the special reports from a builder because a builder needs to supply reports and at, what's that process and how often and when where do these turn up and show up you're talking about reporting on the way through because well, first of all, you know, special reports, what I often consider special reports is is what you get during your development permit stage. And so all that needs to go into your tender documentation. And th there may be an acoustic report re required. So if there was, the, the recommendations should, should be reflected in the architect's drawing, so you would have had that. But I'd always give the builder a copy of those. Uh, sometimes things like um, man, uh, a management plan for, for trees, you know how that gets done because part of our development permit might might require one 
It could be neighbours' trees. Like I've had neighbours' trees right on the boundary. Had to get an, an arborist report on how not to destroy those trees when we're building. And that reported need to go to the builder as well. So any reports that you have along the way, that, that, that would should go to the builder during that tender stage so that they're really familiar with it. Because if you, say you omitted, forgot, just didn't actually realise you needed to send a particular report to a builder and it ended up changing things. Like we recently, I don't know, she did give it to the builder, but we, we had a mentoring student who had a neighbour who was pedantic and so she had to fix up her driveway so it didn't go over the tree roots, et cetera, et cetera. But say that didn't happen, maybe she didn't pass that on to the to the person who was doing that. Who? What would the builder's reaction be or what would they then do? Do they just say tough cookie? Well, with some of the reports that you get during your development permit, when you get your building permit, they, they might be rectified. So if you had to get a, an acoustic report, for instance, at part of your development permit and they recommended a certain type of fence, Maybe some windows need thicker glass. Right. Maybe some walls need you know, double plasterboard or insulation. That should be then be reflected in the plan. So you'd have to make sure that the architect then at the building permit made those sort of alterations. Mm. But, um, I mean, something like a management plan for tree roots, um, it's really up to, well, it's, it's up to the developer to, to pass them on. Not such a big deal then, but, um, I mean, when you, I tell you where I've seen people make mistakes, is during the architectural design process, an architect might issue another set of plans because he's made amendments to it. Mm. And what they do at the bottom of the plans, they have the revision number. Mm. So every time they do change plans, they have revision A, revision B, revision C. What I have seen is people send the wrong set of plans. To the, to the builder, and it might be an earlier set of plans and the, the builder doesn't know, but these, these plans have been updated, but the builder might not get that copy. So I always like to have a schedule of plans as part of the document that has architectural plans, revision, revision F, you know, or whatever it is, same mm -hmm. with the engineering. So everybody knows what the plans are and that they've got the latest latest ones. But I've seen people get a bit slack on that. And so the builder goes and builds stuff that's actually changed and you either got to live with that or the builder's got to, you know, undo it and redo it. Which and that would be money. at your cost because you yeah, sent them the wrong yeah. one. Yeah. Oh, so that would be at your cost. Have you you've, have you ever done that, Bob? You sent the wrong, uh, not, wrong version? <laughs> not, just, I'll, just say, I'll say not yet. Not yet. Because No, well, I... I I fully understand the importance of it. Mm. So I always check that I do have the latest revisions before I send anything out yeah. in, a, in a tender. And also I have a table of documentation that has the revisions, mm. you know, listed on it so that the, the builder is then quoting on those particular sets of plans with those particular revisions. Mm. And so it's all sort of documented as part of like a quality control thing really. I do the same, it's interesting that you talk about it, but I do the same with information memorandums, like we all, yeah. like I capital raise, so I'm sending out information memorandums a lot um, for people who want to not do property developments, but want to make money from them by investing in, in ones we're doing. And I'll often have version two, version three, but when I, because I have, I send out um, like a whole a package like the information memorandum and, the, and an application guide and the units like everything they've got to do I've generally sent it all out but I keep that in a folder and mm. when I get version two or version three of an information memorandum because you can get different versions for different mm. reasons timings might change you might find that the profits increase which we've had happen recently so I just get the other one I delete it yeah. and I put the new version in the file but actually, why we're on that, Bob, before I move on, that's something I have seen a lot is tardy paperwork from property developers, mm. as in not having a filing system on your laptop, as yep. in just using your, well, I'm going to say laptop or computer, whatever you want it, however you use it, but just having an inbox and only keeping or just keeping everything in an inbox, which is basically yeah. just throwing it in your bedroom and then you've got to find it, not even putting them in a file order or anything. 
but then having attachments to those not extracting them and putting them in the right place to me it's irresponsible I know. And, I, and i know so I many people i saw a developer once who had an inbox of literally thousands yep. of emails and didn't know how to create a folder you have to create a folder oh, that it's you have to have a filing system and it can't be one of those you can't progress until you manage something like that it's it's like if you were learning to walk, you got one pair of shoes and you want to become a runner and you never get bigger sizes as you grow. It's just you have to get bigger with it and to get better with, bigger with it, you have to have a system. And if you don't understand how to put one together or if you don't understand how to use a, a filing system on your laptop and in your email inbox, you need both of those, not just one, mm. then go and learn how because yeah. it, it's just... And, and it's, keep it on the cloud. Yeah, and a copy. Yeah, Exactly. On a cloud, yeah. Uh, we are very diligent with all of our uh, stuff. There's you have to be. Copies everywhere, versions everywhere. We can all access stuff. And but anyway, so we were on, we were on to where where was, was Going I even sideways at? again? Oh, but, not but really. A really important point. Yeah. Oh yeah. We, so different versions for. Oh, we're talking about reports. We're talking about reports. Yeah. Right? So okay, you're talking about the reports that the builder has to when it comes to what they re- required to do. Hmm. What about the reports that you receive from a builder? Well, builders don't really issue reports as much, but other than like their communication through the construction period. Yeah. And there's there's some software packages that builders can use now hmm. where they can update basically on a on a daily basis, what's happening on site. And part of that software package includes uh, photographs yep. and and brief notes and so forth. So I had a builder who used to re- report daily. Like, like I'm happy enough if it's like weekly or twice weekly at the most, but every day it add up some, a few photos and, and some basic comments, you know. Oh, yeah. plumber, plumber was here today, electricians finished the rough in, da-da-da. And some photos. I thought, well, that's that's really overkill for what I need. But mm. but it was in a, a sort of a program, and he just you know it just it was easy for him to package, upload photographs, make yep. some comments, and then boom, flick it off. You know. Um, so, but good communication is important with builders. But that that comes back to you know, are you going to meet with the builder? How often you're going to meet? How often you go to site? All those sorts of things. Okay, so the special reports really beforehand. Let's talk about. Are you ready? Mm-hmm. GST. Oh. We haven't opened that door yet. So uh, the GST, when you've got a quote from a builder, well, mm. let's unpack the whole GST situation. Go. Well, some quote some builders. Yeah. So when a builder quotes a price, some builders talk including GST and some builders quote, or even, even when they're talking, excluding GST. You might ask a builder, oh, look, uh, roughly what's the square metre rate for building a two-storey townhouse around this area? And some builders might say, oh, 2,600 a square metre. Well, the first question is, does that include GST or not? Because some builders do include it and some don't. Well, that's $260 per square metre different. Mm. You know, if Multiply that by a big number. Multiply and that it's a by, big number. by 200 square metres. And it's what? Oh, what did I say? 250 by uh, 25,000. No, you said 260. Oh, $26,000 difference just on GST or not. Oh, ouch. That's a lot. I mean, that's just on a square metre rate, like, mm. like over you know, 200 square metres, whatever it is. So whenever a builder quotes anything, whether it's a square metre rate or an actual dollar value, and they don't mention GST, first question you ask is, does it include GST or not? And uh, I saw... This is, this is quite a few years ago now. I know of a couple who were negotiating with a builder, getting bill prices. They decided the price was good. Uh, they went through all the other process. Yeah, went through the pro- all, all the tender, everything. The price was good. Mm. Uh, asked the builder to prepare a contract. Builder prepared a contract. Uh, met with the builder, ready to sign the contract, and page one or two, wherever it is, depending on the contract, the bill price. All of a sudden, the bill price is high. And they said, oh, where did that come that's not the price we agreed upon he said yes it is and they said no it's it's too high and they had a look at it what had happened is the builder was quoting a price not including gst without really talking about gst Hmm. they were in their head thinking oh it includes gst 
but not really saying, does it include GST? Assuming. And, and they got all the way to signing a contract before the subject about GST was raised. And all of a sudden, the bill price is 10% more than what they were thinking. Ouch. That, that's a fair few dollars. Yeah. You know. Could um, be 26000 It <laughs> could be. Well, like on a $2 million contract, it's 200000 You know, like, mm. like that's a big difference. Mm. 200 suddenly goes on your cost that, and 200 comes off your profit. Yeah. At the same time, that makes a big difference to your return on cost, your oh. percentage. So, um, and all because neither party thought to mention GST. Mm. Yeah, so that's one to watch out for. That's a big tip in this podcast. Check with your builder whether they are including or not including in GST in the conversation, so you don't get the big shock mm. and waste everyone's. Yeah, you'll yeah. go too far down a road. Eventually, it'll be on the contract because all building contracts have the amount not including GST plus GST plus the full amount. You know, that mm. it's all spelled out in the contract. It's what happens before then. Mm. Hey, we have our free Property Development Masterclass coming up. This event is from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. It is incredibly popular. You're going to learn the nine steps to property development. You're going to learn a few creative strategies, how to do property development with little or no money of your own. And by registering and attending, you go on the draw to win our online course for free, valued at 3495. So this will be a must attend event, Saturday, the 7th of September, 9 to 1. Click the link below, join us, and this could be the beginning of your property development journey. Journey. We look forward to seeing you there. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to talk about is inclusions, Bob. And when we get the contract back, we have to make sure that everything's in it from mm. the builder. And I'm talking things like the clothesline. Yeah. What are the other things that people often forget? Well, what are the things that we yeah, when we get a billing contract, what we want is what we call a turnkey price. And this has to be spelled out in your fixtures and fittings and your specifications. But what we want is everything down to letterbox, uh, clothesline, TV aerial, uh, window furnishings, lights. In other words, it's ready for somebody to move into and bring in their own furniture. But it, it's all done, fully connected, everything's there. That's, that's what we call a full turnkey price. Mm. And so you need to make sure all those things are in there. You know, I've seen people forget letterbox. So if it's not in there, the builder won't build one for you. No. And they finished and all of a sudden they realise, oh, my God, there's no, no letterbox. letterbox. Yeah. And that's only minor. but <laughs> only minor. Letterbox. Yeah, but Well, no TV aerials. The wiring's, in the, oh. the wiring's in the roof somewhere, but there's no TV That'd aerials. That'd be so annoying, wouldn't it, no TV mm. aerials? You have to watch out for that, particularly with project builders. So project builders are the sort of builders who typically build houses, but sometimes they build more than houses. And you see them in display villages, you know, you, you know the bigger ones. Mm. They often, when they quote a price, you've got to be very careful of what's included and not included because sometimes they're using a very low standard of spec to make the price look good. Yeah. And they, and they leave stuff out, like no landscaping, no this, no that. I've seen them with no landscaping, no driveway, no fence, you know, in the base price. Look, that's okay as long as you're aware of it because then you, if you're aware of it, then you can start to add those things back in. You see that more with project builders than you do with what I call commercial builders that we use on, you know, multi-unit stuff, you know, townhouses, duplexes, that sort of stuff. But it, it all comes back to what's in your space and that's what they have to quote on. And this is stuff that you need to know. And just so you do know, the content for the last two um, podcasts that we've done on building, uh, on builders, is I actually just <laughs> watched the module in the online course. I was like, how can we break this down? So I went through it and then, so if for those, if you are interested in learning this and in, in in depth detail, yeah, yeah. it does. This is, uh, it this is, is all, scraping the surface it compared is all to in what's the in the actual course. course. But it's really good for you as a listener to, uh, one, just be inspired about property developing, but to realise that there are lots of things to consider. You just got to do everything of, right. Yeah, yeah, you know, There's yeah. rules to all of this. I mean, yeah. we detail it, obviously, yeah. you know, in the course or memory program of holding people's hands, but uh, it's a matter of getting it all right and not missing stuff out. Yeah. Okay, the next thing I want to uh, go on to, Bob, is builders' timeframes and the considerations. <laughs> That's a good one at the moment. I'm actually just going to pop these under here. And the considerations for builders' timeframes, because you might have gone out to, you know, three builders and you've got some come back and you're like, hmm. yep, this, oh, perfect price, everything I want. But the time they can't start for eight months, even though though I've seen that their build is shorter time frame, but it mm. still finishes later because they can't start for longer. So, w what do you look for in the in the considerations when it comes to time frames? Yeah, so there's more to it than just price. Mm. 
uh, time frames are important. Look, you, you could have a builder quote it, let's keep it simple, a million dollars and he can build it in 26 weeks. Some, some, somebody else is 970,000, but he wants 45 weeks. Assuming everything was equal, quality of builder, everything, mm. which one would you choose? Well, you actually got to do the numbers because, you know. The, 26 weeks all day long. Yeah, because you, you're paying interest on time, aren't you? So, yeah. So time is money. How's it work out? It mightn't really be cheaper. Oh, you take, you, oh, you've got a price difference. Oh, that's what I mean. Yeah. Sorry, so a million I dollars. Equal. Yeah, I, I actually didn't listen. I wasn't. I the, mi- the, <laughs> <laughs> the million dollars is the fast guy. Yeah. The cheaper guy is the slower guy. Yeah. So which one? Well, you'd have to work it out because there's, you know, that extra time expensive. the slower guy is going to take is going to cost you money in holding costs. You know. Particularly in interest on mm. your loan, so nineteen weeks longer. Yeah, so in your head, which one do you think oh, would work it'd out? Probably, probably be the million. You know, I'd rather get get it done and dusted and get it out of there faster. Yeah, but but you know, you can work it out if you want to. It's pretty easy on your on your feasibility calculator. If you have the feasibility calculator, <laughs> pop it in, push the button, boom. The property mastermind mountain. feasibility. There calculator. you go. So so yeah, so they are, that is a um, so it's not just it's not just price. Yep. Timing's important as well, and some builders, as you say, can't start for a while. But then you. Might not be able to start for a while either. You could have a tenant. Uh, you could be doing stuff on a delayed settlement. Like there could be all sorts of reasons. Yeah. Well, you want to work stuff out that you haven't got tenants hanging around for twelve months. No. That's all part of the you know the stuff Due you diligence. do. Early. Well, yeah. yeah but, but I mean, it's taking you a while to get your development permit and your building permit. So there's plenty of time to to sort out tenants. Hopefully. Although I have seen people buy a development site only to find out the tenant is on a two-year lease and they only, only recently signed it. Oh, yeah, another wee tip Then you've got there. to try and buy them out. You mightn't have to buy them out for 12 months by the time you get all your approvals, you've chosen your builder, you've organised your construction finance, you know, and you're ready to go. Mm. You've still got 12 months left on their lease and you want to get started. You know, you might have to, like, give them something friendly. Yeah. Buy out their lease, help them move, pay for their removals. Yeah. You know, give them a handshake, send them to Dreamworld for four days, all expenses paid. Who knows what you've got to do. But, you know, I've seen silly stuff like that now that you mention it. Mm. It's off subject, but that's another tip. That, but it's <laughs> Check on. the leases. But, but, well, yeah, exactly. I mean, but, well, that's not really when it comes to build contracts, but, yeah. Mm. So, okay, so time frames as considerations. Is there yeah, any that's other a big reason? thing at the moment. Yeah. And is there any other reason we should consider timeframes apart from financial reason? What's another reason we should consider timeframes? Well, for the it, it, it's mostly about it's it's mostly about what it's going to cost you, yeah, and how fast you want it. You, you you want to be in and out of a deal as quickly as possible, so you can say move on to the next one. Yeah, you know, and uh, although we have seen instances where projects have made more money because they've slowed down, mm. remember, you know, we've had a period of time when that happened. Yeah. Um, because if, if prices are going up fairly rapidly, it might suit you to go slower and get more money when you sell at the other end. We, you know, we saw that after the We've big actually, C, didn't yeah, we? Yeah, a couple of times. And we there was a, a law change or a council uh, zoning sort of issue change and they were able to get another another lot on mm. their site. Mm. So that was another thing that was yeah, in the favour with the time that, that was a change with the yeah. planning scheme. But 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 other than that, like if prices are rising rapidly, mm. um, it, it far outstrips the extra interest you pay on, mm. on time, you know? So that could be but a consideration if you can see if it's, it's starting it's to It's not happen. a plan for success. It's, no. It happens more accidentally than anything. Yeah. Mm. But we saw that in like 2021. More when, by good luck than good we, management. Oh, yeah. I think it was you know, roughly 2021 when we saw a nationally uh, house prices just rise really rapidly, really quickly. Mm. And so some people that had sites that didn't stack up all of a sudden do uh, and and people that were had started building and they're saying, you know, they want to sell at the end. They're thinking, oh, hang on, prices are going up so much. How about we slow down a bit, mm. you know, slow down, boys, yes. um, you know. But also what happened when in, in instances similar to that is that whole sunset clause came in and builders mm. crashed contracts so they could yeah. keep the sites or maxim, uh, yeah. change con- – so they, they create, let contracts crash so they could put new and better ones in place, didn't mm. they? Yeah. Mm. yeah, we saw that originally a lot in around whenever it was, 2013, 14, when we saw some really big rises in the Sydney market mm. and the Melbourne market. We saw it then. And it also happened a bit, whenever there's rapid rises, mm. that's when, you know, if you're locked, if a developer's locked into a contract, 
and the prices have gone up a lot since he signed that contract. Mm. The question is, well, can I crash the contract and how can I? Mm. You know, that's what a lot of developers think. But financiers these days are, don't like that happening, so they've had these big, long sunset clauses. Well, we had a case where a guy contacted us and he had that happening, mm. but he was he was buying the land and it was being – someone was trying to crash it and he ended mm. up taking it to court and he won. Mm. Uh, he just kind of signed up to get some yeah. advice from Bob about how to deal with it, which was great. I think we gave him – Advice that wasn't legal. Well, I don't mean it was illegal. I mean we can't give legal advice. So we gave, you know, a layman's opinion. We also gave him a lawyer. Yeah, and he won, so that was good. <laughs> he was happy, and then he ended up getting married and marrying his lawyer. So what about that? <laughs> well, there you go. That can happen. There you go. Marrying lawyers, eh? Oh, yeah. Gee. But they, they, he rang us afterwards. But anyway, okay. So moving on from builders and timeframes, Bob, I want to talk about getting references about your builder and the different places how many you should get and the different places you should go and what type of um, references you yeah. would look at getting. So if you haven't used a builder before, the question is how did you get onto them? I we mean, talked last episode about using yeah. your architect might refer Yeah, quantity some. surveyor perhaps. Yep. Uh, look, I've, I've been directed to – I used a builder on three projects that was recommended by my lawyer. Mm-hmm. I used a builder on seven projects that was recommended to a, another developer friend of mine. Mm. I've had architects recommend them. I've put, done them through um, a building brokers, you know, all, all sorts of areas that I've picked up good builders, you know, mm. over a period of time. And uh, so wh- where were we on that now? I've gone on a slight tangent. Oh, just like w- client references. Oh, references, yeah. So what I'd like to do if, if I'm – Looking at a builder I haven't had any real experience with. Mm. I mean, if they're recommended by somebody that I trust, that's a good start. Yeah. But I always check in with quantity surveyors and see what, what if they know the builder at all, if they mm. know anything about the builder. Because as I said, I think in the previous episode, we talked about quantity surveyors dealing with builders during the whole construction process. So they get to see uh, which builders are on time on their contract. Which, Doing a good which, job. Yeah, which builders are good behind time. Which builders... Happy uh, keep, clients. Keep, keep trying to get variations yep. or, you know, squeeze on PC items, all that. So they know how builders are performing. And so it's, it's possible that a quantity surveyor, particularly if they're one of the larger firms that does a lot with finances, which is typically what I use, they, they know a lot of builders out there. They see a lot of builders in, in a period of time and they might well be able to give me some information on that builder. Uh, I, I remember I said in the last episode I've had two builders go broke in, in all my time. Mm. One of them that did go broke, the first inkling I got was from a quantity surveyor. What did he say? It was the quantity surveyor that I was using on the job. He said, look, there's a few rumours going around about this builder. He said, like, just be careful, check your pricing, make sure, you know, they're not getting ahead of the game. Oh, dear. Um, because on another job that he was the quantity surveyor on, a couple of the tradies were – were, were sort of complaining they they, they're behind, they weren't getting paid. Right. And so quantity surveyors pick this stuff up mm. and uh, particularly when they go to site, some of the traders are, you know, whinging about it or or they see the quantity surveyor's name, sometimes they're on the fence and all that. Although sometimes even traders that aren't getting paid ring the financier if they know who it is. Really? And it's not hard to find out who the financier is because all, all you have to do is a $20 title search and you can see who the mortgagee is. Mm. And they often complain. Tip. That, yeah, so th- this can happen, and that, and, and you know, like builders that aren't paying tradies. Um, I mean, there's more, there's some guarantee funds and that that have opened since then, but that was the the first clue I got that there was a problem with a builder that ended up going broke on me. Hmm. The irony of that was one of their references was the Westpac Bank, who was their banker, and guess who financed my project. The Westpac Bank? Yeah. So what happened? <laughs> I had to go and tell the Westpac Bank, hey, listen, that favourite, that lovely client of yours that you recommend has gone broke. Uh, so, uh, did well, they, what did they do? At that well, I can't do anything about that. They, what did they just it's do? up to me to do. Did they come up with the whole, oh, <laughs> oh, oh, <laughs> oh, yeah. that's not So, uh, anyway, as you do, you work your way through that stuff. But, um, so we're looking at different ways to get references, and there, there's more than well, there's, there's current references and par, past yeah. references. So, you could have a past reference, like somebody I, that they've worked, like you could I ask your builder talk. directly, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, I want to know. I want to know a couple of clients that the builders had that he's finished jobs for in the last 12 months. I mean, finished jobs. Yep. I also like to talk to two clients that they're currently doing jobs for. Yep. Just to see how they're going now. Yeah. And how they went on a whole job. Yeah. And that's one of the things. 
ask Quandy surveyors. We do a credit check on them as well, uh, just to make sure that you know they're not owing money all around town. And for some people, it's uncomfortable doing that. It's uncomfortable making that phone call to say, "Hey, I'm using a builder, and I'd just like for you to give me uh, just a, you know." Well, a- there's a bit to getting a credit check. No, but if you were just ringing up for a, a like oh, somebody yeah. you're going to see somebody, but a lot of people find that sort of thing uncomfortable. Mm. They do. Don't know why. I mean, the people that you're talking to should have done the same thing themselves. You know. Yeah. If they did or not, I don't know. Have you ever? Do you know of anyone who hasn't done that, Bob, and just put oh, them well, in the bottom? Yeah, look, the, the thing about builders is, like like I've always said for years, yep. if you watch a current affair, all you're going to see is crook builders. You're going to see builders running down but the street with, with cameramen chasing them and all this sort of stuff. But like, the good builders aren't going to make a current affair. So you, no. get, you get a bit of a, a slanted view on builders if you watch those current affair programs too much. Most builders are good. Some are exceptionally good and a few are bad. Yeah. And so you've got to try not end up with a bad one. So Most builders are good. Yeah. Yeah, they are, yeah. Yeah. And some are exceptionally good. Uh, you know, I'm just thinking of it's somebody who, who's been through our mentoring program, recently did a five townhouse project, had a tremendous relationship with the builder. The builder was fast, and builders aren't fast at the moment, but this builder was fast, mm. did a great job, great communicator, finished ahead of time on budget. Wow. Uh, communicated with them really Dream well run. all the way through, explained stuff to them that they didn't fully understand. Uh, and and they had a great experience. They've since referred that builder to somebody else in our mentoring program as well. Uh, but that was that was a great time. You know, I've had some great builders. Yeah. Yeah. So you, you can only do so much. You know what? You should always listen to is your gut. Mm. You you meet one. You have communication with one. If your initial communication is they're hard to get a hold of, and they're not getting back to you, yep. well, hey, there's a red flag. If mm. you talk to someone and they say. I don't really want to say anything bad, but the job is done. We'll hear what they're not saying because some people don't like to say what they really need to say. I think you've got to listen to what your initial feeling is, which might be like, mm, actually, no. Hmm. Communication's really important during a build. And you picked up that point then, and I had the conversation not long ago with, with one of our mentoring students. He was looking at two builders. They're very close on price. One of them was really good at communicating, always returned a phone call. If they didn't answer, they returned quickly after it. Yeah. You know, good communicator. The other one, not so much. Might ring back the next afternoon after you rang him this morning, you know, that sort of stuff. Like when you ring the bank. Yeah, and (laughs) and that decision, I think there was about a $20,000 difference on a duplex. The dealer of the two by 20 grand was the guy that communicated well. Yep. yep, he was the one that got the job. Really? Mm. Okay, there you go. Because communication well, is Twenty grand everything. is nothing in a build. Like you can lose twenty grand by sneezing if you've got a bad builder. Yeah, they'll always have the last, the last laugh as it is. So you know, choose wisely. What are those three considerations? They say, do you want it done quickly? Do you want it done neatly? Neatly? No, quickly. Well, yeah. Or, well, no, fast. You want it done fast, you want it done well, or you do want it done? What are the three things that you say? You can have e- any of the two. You can oh, have two of these. Yeah, so, so what is it? It's, it's, it's fast, would you like it's it done well, f- or it's neat. Yeah, would you like it done fast, would you like it done well, or would you like it done neat? You can mm. have t- any two of Choose those. Choose two. Which ones do you want? No, cheap. Fast, yeah. well, cheap. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I thought you said neat. Well, well is neat. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Fast, well, cheap. Yeah. yeah. Fast, well, cheap. So, so that's, that's often a, a saying, isn't it? Yeah. A I can build it cheap and I can build it fast, but it won't be neat. Or, <laughs> yeah, exactly. or you know, choose yeah. any combination of the two. The, the point is it doesn't have to be that way. No. That's a bit of a builder's joke. Yeah. You know, but you can get all three. And, and when you do, it's great. You know, having a good builder on a development is an absolute joy. Okay, Bob. Before we get into winding this one up, this was something I didn't know. Mm-hmm. That's not possible. <laughs> no, there's plenty <laughs> I don't know. Trust me. Um, I loved. I love it when people ask questions, and I love it when people don't know stuff. Or you know, I, I was talking to somebody just. I think I got off the phone, and I said, "It's so refreshing when people are honest when they don't know something. It does. It's just so nice that there is a maximum revenue limit on builders. Mm. It blew my mind." Unpack that one for me. Well, when a builder is licensed, well, they have to be, but, you know, when, when they've got a license, they're given a certain amount of contract value in a, in a, in a, in a year, like in a uh, financial year. 
let, let's say someone was given a limit of ten thousand, ten million dollars. Yep. What that means is they can't take on more than ten million dollars worth of contracts in that year. What's the purpose because, of it? Well, so builders don't stretch their finances too far, because that uh, that limit. So this is set by the licensing body in each of the different states. You yeah. know, if it was Queensland, it'd be the QBCC or wherever it is in the different states. And so what they don't want is builders that aren't really strong financially taking on big projects or lots of projects because they, they're going to strain their cash flow and get into trouble. Right. And so the regulation authority wants to have a look at the builders. They have a look at their, you know, financials really, mm. what their assets, gross assets, net assets, debts, uh, banks, over, you know, banking overdrafts, all those sorts of things. Yeah. And based on that, they'll give them a limit and they can't go over that limit. Wow. Because it all gets registered at that same body so they can quickly see when they hit their limit. It makes absolute you know, sense. That can go up in time. Mm. You know, as, as a builder gets, um, you know, does more jobs. How do they get that to go in. up? Do they go and apply well, they, they, somewhere? They get or? More from, well, they can apply to the same body. Yep. If, if their financial situation improves, then they can get that limit raised. And which means they can take on more jobs or bigger jobs. Who monitors that, Bob? The, the same authority that regulates builders' licences in each of the states. Hmm. It'd be the QBCC in Queensland where we live. Uh, and each state has its own regulating authority that, you know, licences uh, builders and trades tradespeople and, and sets those limits. So I had, a, I had a builder once. It was about May and I, and I was at the contract signing stage. Hmm. He couldn't sign it until the 1st of July oh, because it would have taken him over. He had, he had to wait about four or five weeks. But it was a good price and, and I was still finalising a few matters. Wow. Um, so 1st of July, you, you know, it started again. Wow. So uh, Interesting start. Yeah. Bob, I think we've pretty much covered everything when it comes to builders well, for, to, for these two yeah. podcasts anyway. I think we've for, done – For a, a podcast, we've, we've done well. Well, I think we've unpacked quite a bit. So I hope you got a lot out of those two podcasts put together, a lot of information there on builders, how to find them, what to look out for. Just all, we unpacked quite a bit, Bob, didn't we? I yeah, think we it was did. great. But you may not be interested or you might be interested in property developing, but there are two different roads to go down. Yeah, well, look, you can make a lot of money out of property development, do it properly. There's two ways to make a lot of money out of property development. One's to be a property developer. And we can certainly educate you and get you on that. But the other way is to be an investor in a property development. Yep. And you can still make great property development profits. In fact, sometimes you can make just as much money out of a property development by being an investor than you can out of being an actual property developer yep. without doing any of the work or having the knowledge. So great opportunities. We've got some projects ourselves haven't we? Yeah, we've got a few underway. So if that's something you would like to have a chat to me about, head over to the website, propertymastermind.com.au or www.propertymastermind.com.au, book a call and have a chat with me uh, or even just send me an email, but either of those two. And we can just chat about what we have available and see if it suits you. And that's only if you'd rather go down the road of being involved in property development and still make great money, but you don't want to do the property development yourself right now okay well that's the end of this episode and we will catch up with you next week we've got a fabulous interview with a very successful mentoring student who uh, made more profit than he thought he was going to so we will catch you next week bye for now bye now